the world is growing smaller, busier, more clamorous. The world is growing more crowded, more footsore, because more people are determined to get from one place to another whatever the effort may cost. Even the air is becoming a congested area. And all this crowding raises an apparently insuperable problem. This one. This family knowing all too well what it means waiting for a bus. The British Motor Corporation took this problem as a challenge. They realized that what such a family needed was a fast, safe, low-priced car that was fun to drive. Big enough for all of them, yet small enough to get about this shrinking, crowded world. It called for a revolution in car design. So they put all their vast resources into this project to transform the blueprint of a typical family car. The aim was to turn it into something smaller outside and bigger inside. Determining factors were wheel positions, where the engine goes, the gearbox, clutch and transmission, and the problem of suspension. Alex Isigoni, the brilliant designer, faced the task of producing a car with a better ratio of interior space to overall dimensions than had ever been attempted before. He and his team aimed at nothing short of the incredible, packing four passengers roomily into a tough, pacey car. Their starting point was that blueprint of a conventional 12-foot car. They began by cutting it down to 10 feet overall and putting the four wheels at the extreme corners. And next, the boldest step of all, placing the engine across the car, the crux of the revolution. The engine they chose was the famous 850cc Austin engine one of the most successful that BMC have ever produced. And then, to take full advantage of this arrangement, both for space and for better driving characteristics, first the gearbox was fitted under the engine in one piece with the sump. Next, a compact front wheel drive was decided upon. This was made possible by giving the four wheels independent suspension with rubber cones instead of the conventional steel springs. Thus, all the working parts of the car were disposed of in remarkably little space, leaving room for an astonishing amount of floor space and ample seating for four adult passengers. And yet, the smart, modern-looking body really is only 10 feet overall. This was brilliance on the drawing board. Here was a wonder car in the precise mind of the master designer and his team. But it didn't stay there for long. Prototypes of all the components were made and assembled into a handmade body, and the first tests began. On a disused airfield converted into a grueling test track, prototype baby Austins were put through preliminary trials. Rack and pinion steering gave them a 30-foot turning circle, very handy for parking. BMC insist on the most searching tests before putting a new model into the hands of the public. Over rough track to see how the new rubber suspension stands up to the shock. At speed to see how the hydraulic brakes grip the little wheels. Tests that go on and on. There are special instruments so that the test drivers can check performance and compare careful notes.
The cars are tested in all conditions on the track, but that's just the start of it. Stringent tests at home and abroad go on side by side. How do they stand up to the varying conditions on the continent? Hour after hour on Norway's icy slopes. and mile after mile on the punishing surface of Belgium's cobbled pave. You don't pull up for petrol very often in a car that does something like 50 miles to the gallon, even at a steady 50. But what interest the incredible sevens created at garages where they did stop in Belgium and right across Europe. It was the same thing on extensive tests carried out on roads at home. Magic on the meandering roads through picture book villages. Tests in Britain, on the continent and in the laboratory, by day and on through the night. Back at the factory, Careful check is kept on how each component stands up to treatment far more grueling than any they would ever encounter at the hands of an owner-driver. A secondary advantage of the space-saving east-west placing of the engine is its easy accessibility for servicing. and the road tests go unremittingly on, weaving through bootlace byways in Britain and blazing along the interminable ribbon of a German autobahn. No motorist in his senses would flog a car the way these test drivers thrashed the new baby prototypes, deliberately. 66 miles an hour, 70, and faster. 72, 3, 4, 75 miles an hour. Surprising the lives out of the motorists, they whipped past. There were so many new and unconventional features. While the cars were tested at home and abroad, individual components were being tested to breaking point in special laboratory machines. The rubber suspension cones. And the shock absorbers. Before ever the first prototypes were assembled, they were given protracted pummelings. But they were put to further tests in Switzerland on really treacherous roads. Here, the remarkable road-holding quality of the new model showed itself. Independent suspension, front-wheel drive, and having the engine at the front of the car all contributed to this. Watch them on a sharp bend. On any reasonable road, the new baby Austin's corner with ease at 50. And water cooling provides a heat bank for effective heating. From the snow of Switzerland to the heat and dust of Spain. Here were killing test conditions for any car, and the baby Austins raced through them triumphantly. They'd faced everything from Norway's icy mountains to the scorching expanse of the great autobahns, from the bone-shaking cobbles of Belgium to the gritty potholes of the hot Sierra. They'd proved conclusively that this indeed was a supreme triumph for Austin engineering.
Here was the forerunner of a brilliant new line in motor cars cruising home through the English countryside.